What up, it's Bowman's Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, November 7th, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Breaking Bad series creator Vince Gilligan is developing a new film that takes place within the same universe as the award-winning drama series. Details of the two-hour film are being kept under wraps, with it being unclear if the project will be released on television or theatrically, the Hollywood Reporter noted. It is also unknown if the film will be a prequel to Breaking Bad, similar to Gilligan's Better Call Saul, or take place after the series ended. The Albuquerque Journal has reported that the film is being referred to as as Greenbrier, and that it will follow the escape of a kidnapped man in his quest for freedom. Production is set to begin in November. Breaking Bad, which starred Brian Cranston, Aaron Paul, Anna Gunn, Dean Norris, Bob Oldenkirk, Jonathan Banks, R.J. Mitt, and Bessie Brandt, ended after five seasons in 2013. AMC and Gilligan then released a prequel series, Better Call Saul, which follows Oldenkirk's crooked lawyer, Saul Goodman. Actor John Schneider and former NFL star DeMarcus Ware, along with their respective professional partners, were sent home on Dancing with the Stars Monday night. Uh, Schneider said upon learning he had been cut from the competition, truly this was one of the best experiences of my life. Uh, Ware says, we're going out on a high note. I learned something every single week. Heading into the next week's Season 27 semifinals are radio personality Bobby Bones, Fuller House star Juan Pablo de Pace, model Alexis Wren, Harry Potter icon Ivana Lynch, Disney Channel's alum Milo Mannheim, and Bachelor in Paradise star Joe Amabile. Tom Bergeron and Aaron Andrews are the show's hosts. The judge panel is comprised of Carol Ann Inaba, Lynn Goldman, and Bruno Tolini. ABC announced Monday it has given a full season order to its freshman cop dramedy, The Rookie. Season 1 will now consist of 20 episodes. Created by Alexi Howley, the show stars Nathan Fillion as John Nolan, a 40-something police academy graduate starring his new job with the Los Angeles Police Department after his wife divorced him and his construction business fails. Mercedes Mason and Richard T. Jones play his supervisor, and Melissa O'Neill and Titus Mackin play his fellow newbie officers. Chip and Go- Joanna Gaines couldn't help but gush about Sun Crew during his TV debut. The television personalities introduced a mu- five-month-old infant on today's uh, to today's anchors Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Kabi during Tuesday's episode of the NBC Morning Show. Joanna told Guthrie and Kabi, he is a gift. We were just wa- talking the other day about how he slowed down time for us. He has just been a gift. Chip and Joanna are parents to Crew and four of their children, 13-year-old Drake, 12-year-old Duke, 12-year-old uh, Ella, and 8-year-old Emmy. The couple discussed the possibility of a sixth child in the interview. Joanna said of Chip, he wants Kurt to have a sister. She also added, before trailing off, I love the process of being pregnant. I love giving birth, so, you know, we don't want to. Joanna gave birth to Crew in June. She penned a candid post about mom guilt Sunday after taking time to pick up uh, to pick and press flowers with her daughter, Emmy. The star wrote, I know at times it can be hard to find simple ways to connect with your parents, especially in the tired and the hard and busy times in life. It can feel like it's all or nothing, but I really believe it's something in the middle where the grace is extended and these simple unplanned moments are actually the sweetest. She also says, I write all this for any of you out there who may experience mom guilt. I promise you that it's a never-ending cycle that leads to nowhere. Replace the word guilt guilt with grace from one mom to another stop being so hard on yourself bachelor alum ali fatatowski is learning to embrace her post baby body the 34 year old television personality shared a post and a body positive message monday on instagram after welcoming son riley doran in the spring fatatowski bared her stomach in a pink bralette and black leggings in the picture. She is parents to five-month-old Riley and two-year-old daughter Molly Sullivan with husband Kevin Mano. Fedotowski wrote, Self-love is a difficult thing to fully embrace. When I look at myself in the mirror, I can't help but notice that my hips are wider than they used to be. My wrinkles are deeper than what I was in my 20s, and my stomach has lumps and bumps that didn't used to be there. 
But she also said, but when I try to remember that my hips are wider because they give birth to two beautiful children, my wrinkles are deeper because I've sl- spent countless sleepless nights making sure my kiddos are cared for, fed, and loved. And my belly is ex- extra squishy because it's spent 18 months making sure two sweet little babies have a place called home. Uh, she also adds, sometimes what we see as flaws on the outside are actually what makes us stunning, stunningly beautiful on the inside. Hashtag self-love, hashtag body image, hashtag postpartum body, hashtag postpartum, hashtag postpartum belly. The former Bachelorette star posted a sweet snapshot of herself holding Riley in October. Her dog Owen can be seen in the background of the photo. She gushed in the caption, no one makes me smile like my two kiddos. Gosh, I love them. Candy Burris and her husband have found a surrogate for baby number three. The 42-year-old television personality said in an interview Monday with Us Weekly she's in the process of hiring someone to carry her embryo with Todd Tucker. Burris told the magazine, yeah, we're moving forward. We decided we want to get a surrogate. She says we did find someone, and right now we are in the process. You know, it hasn't been done, but we're in the process. Burris is parents of 16-year-old daughter Riley with Russell Block Spencer and 2-year-old son Ace with Tucker. The surrogate will carry one of the two embryos Burris has left from using in vitro fertilization to conceive Ace. The star says we have girls. We have two embryos that are still left. Uh, from what we had ace so we have two embryos left and we know they're girls the real housewives of atlanta star had told ensigns magazine in october she was exploring ways to have another child burris confirmed uh, we're definitely trying to figure out ways to grow our family i know a lot of people thought that it that meant that i was pregnant but i'm not pregnant let's be clear Uh, She said of her fertility issues, unfortunately, it's not happening. So obviously, we're just going to be talking about what that means for our family. Barras came to fame with the girl group Escape and joined the Real Housewives of Atlanta in season two. The Bravo series premieres its 11th season on Sunday. Amber Portwood says she wants to quit Team Mom OG. The 28-year-old television personality explained in a series of tweets Monday that the MTV series has put her through too much heartache to continue starring on the show. Portwood told her 853,000 followers, I can't do this anymore. I have to quit this show. Uh, She says the heartache this show has put me through is too much to bear anymore. If I will not be shown, then, then there's nothing more to do. My name will not get smeared anymore. I hope everyone is resting easy with the money they've made off of heartache and pain that I've endured. Portwood came to fame on the MTV series 16 and Pregnant before starring on Team Mom. Her followers reached to her pose by voicing their support online. One person tweeted, Good for you. You not only should make your family your own and enjoy it, but you should maybe just take a short break from social media. Not forever, but just long enough to center your world around what's important. Another added, do what's best for your family. You don't owe anyone anything. No more. No amount of money is worth mental anguish. Keep your head up and do what's right for you. Portwood previously threatened to leave Team Mom OG after complaining about unfair treatment. Uh, the star said at the time, "So uh, sad to say, but I'm not going to be a part of Team Mom OG. The way I've been portrayed and treated is unfair. At MTV, sending all my love. Team Mom OG stars Caitlin Lowell, Macy Bookout, Cheyenne Floyd, and Bristol Palin. Portwood went public about her past miscarriage during Monday's episode. Teresa Ghiaducci says her husband Do- Joe Ghiaducci's depart- uh, deportation order is heartbreaking for her family. The 46-year-old television personality spoke out on Tuesday's episode of Good Morning America after a judge ruled Joe will return to Italy after his prison sentence. She told host Michael Strahan, It's very heartbreaking, very sad, adding her four daughters are really upset by the ruling. Adults can handle anything. It's hard for children to go through this. Joe is serving a 41-month prison sentence after pleading guilty to fraud with Teresa in 2014. Teresa, who completed her sentence in December 2015, said the situation has been a strain on their 19-year marriage. The star said, It's very difficult. We've been through a lot. I've gone through ups and downs of being angry. She added, I have to stay strong. I have four beautiful daughters, and they need their mommy. Teresa and Joe are parents of 17-year-old Gia, 14-year-old Gabriella, 13-year-old Melania, and 9-year-old Adriana. Gia and Melania vowed to fight Joe's deportation order in an Instagram post in October. 
Melania wrote, My dad, who is the best dad in the world, needs to come home. We're going to do everything we can to fight this daddy. I love you with all my heart, buddy. Hashtag heartbroken. Teresa shared a photo with her four daughters following Gabriella's 14th birthday in October. She wrote, Love this pic of me and my girls from Gabriella's birthday. I also love watching American Ninja Warrior Jr. with my daughters. And it's our favorite show to watch together. Oscar-winning actor Michael Douglas was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The 74-year-old actor and producer received a plaque Tuesday in Los Angeles in recognition of his contributions to the film industry. Douglas's wife, actress Catherine Zayla-Jones, father Kurt Douglas, and son Cameron Douglas attended the ceremony. Kurt, an actor known for Spartacus and other classic films, received his own star in 1960. Uh, Walk of Fame producer Anna Martinez said in his statement, Michael Douglas is what legends are made of. He joins his legendary actor father, Kurt Douglas, the star, and Michael's will, f- will forever shine just a few feet from one another. Uh, she added, We have been patiently waiting for Michael Douglas to unveil his stellar award since he was selected in 2003 and are so excited to finally honor this Hollywood royal with a star on our historic Hollywood Walk of Fame. Jane Fonda, Eric McCormick, Andy Garcia, and Douglas's former agent Ron Mayer were also present at the event. Douglas honored Zeta Jones and Kirk in a speech f- to the audience. The actor said, according to People, the love of my life is here. I'm talking about Catherine. I'm grateful for your support and your love and your patience. He added, my dad is here. In a month, Kirk will be 102 years old. It means so much to me, Dad, that you're here today. Thank you for your advice, inspiration, and I'll say it simply and with all my heart, I'm proud to be your son. Zeta Jones had shared a sweet video with Douglas as they made their way to the ceremony. The couple will celebrate their 18th wedding anniversary in December. Zeta Jones captioned the post on Instagram. On our way to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Ceremony, my hubby is getting his star to go along with his hands and feet. Hooray for Hollywood. Adele celebrated the upcoming Spice Girls reunion by posting a throwback photo of herself as a young fan. The 30-year-old British singer shared the sweet and funny childhood picture Monday on Instagram. Following news, the Spice Girls will embark on a reunion tour in 2019. The snapshot shows an excited Adele posing in front of her Spice Girls poster in in her bedroom. The post has received over 1.9 million likes as of Tuesday morning. Adele wrote, Ha, this is how I feel right now. I am ready. Spice Girls member Emily B- Emma Button reacted to the photo during her Heart Radio show Tuesday, according to the Evening Standard. She voiced her love for Adele, whom she said she once briefly met at a gig. Button recalled, I was at a gig and I was on my way out getting into my car, and she came running up to me and just went, Oh my God, I'm such a big Spice Girls fan, and I can't even look at you, and now I'm going to go because I'm, I'm going to cry. She says, and she ran off, and actually it was quick. I didn't realize until I was halfway down the stairs and someone went, that's Adele. And I was like, I love you too. Adele covered the Spice Girls song, Spice Up Your Life, during a serum, uh, concert in 2016 and sang Wannabe during her episode of Carpool Karaoke with James Corden the same year. Ariana Grande has been named the 2018 Woman of the Year by Billboard magazine. Grande will be presented with the Women of the Year Award at the 13th Annual Women in Music Dinner and Awards Gala in New York on December 6th. The singer has had an eventful year, releasing her fourth studio album, Sweetener, in August. The release reached number one on the Billboard charts and earned the largest streaming week ever for a pop album by a female artist upon its release. Uh, Billboard's VP of Content, Ross Sar- Saranko, uh, said in the statement, Ariana Grande is a star of her own terms, never bending to any particular musical trend or path in the industry. Uh, he also continued, starting her convictions, she consistently stands up for herself and her decisions in a world that often isn't hospitable to that sort of strength in young women. She's got guts, she's making some of the best music of her career, and she's absolutely deserving of Woman of the Year. Grind enjoys a list of past winners that include Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Lady Gaga, Kate, Katy Perry, Pink, Fergie, Madonna, and last year's winner, Selena Gomez. Grande said on Twitter Tuesday, Thank you for the honor at Billboard. The pop star also released a lyric video for her latest song, Thank You, Next. The track features Grande singing about her past relationships with Ricky Alvarez, Big Sean, Mac Miller, and Pete Davidson. 
South Korean boy band BTS performed with Charlie Poof at the 2018 MBC Plus X Genie Music Awards. The K-pop group took the stage with the 26-year-old American singer at the award show Tuesday in Incheon, South Korea. Neighbor TV posted a video of Poof performing his We Don't Talk Anymore with BTS member Jungkook. He also joined BTS for a rendition of the group's hit single, Fake Love, according to Billboard. BTS won five awards during uh, the ceremony, including Best Artist and Best Digital Album of the Year for Love Yourself Answer. Poof, who will, uh, who perf- uh, who's performing Thursday at in Seoul, took home Best International Artist. BTS shared backstage photos with Poof on Twitter, the group said, uh, and wrote, We met at Charlie Poof at Fukushasha Staff. Uh, Poof responded after BTS's agency Big Hit Entertainment tweeted about his performance with the group. He wrote, This was fun. Thank you. Adding a green heart emoji. BTS released Love Yourself Answer, the third and final installment in its Love Yourself album series in August. The group is promoting the album on its Love Yourself World Tour and will next perform November 13th in Tokyo. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1980, Steve McQueen, one of Hollywood's leading men of the 1960s and 70s, and the star of such action thrillers as Bullet and The Towering Inferno, dies at the age of 50 in Mexico, where he was undergoing an experimental treatment for cancer. In 1979, McQueen had been diagnosed with mesothelioma, a type of cancer often related to asbestos exposure. It was later believed that the regularly handsome actor, who had an affinity for fast cars and motorcycles, might have been exposed to asbestos by wearing racing suits. Terrence Stephen McQueen was born on March 24, 1930, in Beech Grove, Indiana. After, after a troubled youth that included time in reform school, McQueen served in the U.S. Marine Corps in the 1940s. He then studied acting and began competing in motorcycle races. He made his big screen debut with a tiny role in 1956, Somebody Up There Likes Me, um, opposite Paul Newman. McQueen went on to appear in the camp classic The Blob in 1958 and gained fame playing a bounty hunter in the TV series Wanted Dead or Alive, which originally aired on CBS from 1958 to 1961. During the 60s, McQueen built a reputation for playing cool loner heroes in a list of films including the western The Magnificent Seven, which was directed by John Surges and also featured Yul Brenner and Charles Bronson, The Great Escape 1963 in which McQueen played a U.S. soldier in World War II who makes a daring motorcycle escape from a German prison camp and The Sand Peoples 1966, a war epic for which he received a Best Actor Oscar nomination. McQueen played a detective in one of his most popular movies 1968's Bullet, which featured a spectacular car chase throughout the streets of San Francisco. That same year, the actor portrayed an elegant thief in the Thomas Crown Affair. In the 1970s, McQueen was one of the high, Hollywood's highest paid actors and starred in hit films such as director Sam Peckinpah's The Getaway with Ali McGraw, to whom McQueen was married from 1973 to 1978. Um, Papalian in 1973 with Dustin Hoffman and The Towering Inferno in uh, 1974 with Paul Newman, William Holden, and Faye Dunaway. In the summer of 1980, Mexi- uh, McQueen traveled to Rosito Beach, Mexico, where he underwent an unorthodox cancer treatment that involved, among other things, coffee enemas and a therapy derived from apricot pits. On November 6, 1980, he had surgery to remove his cancerous masses for his body. He died the following day. His final films were Tom Thorne and The Hunter, both of which were released in 1980. And that was your entertainment report for Wednesday, November 7th. 2018. I'm your husband, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R E Y M E L O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report. Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.